being here uh, today. As our clerk, uh, you indicated we don't have a public comment this morning from our citizens. But uh, in any, at any rate, we appreciate our, our citizens' um, contribution and participation in local government. I'll move on today. Uh, we have on our first on our agenda, we have a presentation, and the presentation is by Terry Gable, and it's a SPLOS update. So thanks for being here. You're welcome. Um, well, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board. My name is Terry Gable. I'm with Mullen Alpha Belly, and I'll be pre presenting the uh, SPLOS report updates for uh, November. So the revenues that we're, we're reporting on, the September revenues that came in, and then it'll be work uh, that we update some projects through October. Um, this is a slide we, we just report on. It shows all three programs. Um, the numbers represent what's actually been programmed to this point. Uh, we're right at just a little above 10 million now with invoices paid to date. Um, hadn't seen a big increase in that in the last couple of months. The, if we t we uh, split that up by, by departments, fire is right at $5 million. <laughs> Transportation is right, uh, right on the heels of, of fire with about $5 million we've invoiced. And then <coughs> parks, again, we have a lot of things in parks that are under design. Uh, we're starting to get some invoices in, but it's, it's, it's slowly creeping up and it'll take some big jumps the uh, first of next year. Uh, estimated collections, we saw a small deal from last month, uh, but we are still the big uh, thing to look at here is we're still above the projection line. Um, the projection, projected revenues was just a little over $2 million. Uh, we were at two point, well, $2,061,000. So we're, we're still tracking above the, those projections and, and still looking real good. The main, like I said, the main thing is staying above that line. Uh, total to date, for both years one and two, we've collected uh, with revenues 30, $36.2 million approximately. Uh, that compared to the projections for those 18 months. So we've, we've actually, in the black now with our, uh, we have an actual overage. Uh, revenues again in, in last year two have kind of kicked us up. So we're a little over $100,000 $100, over uh, our projections for the, uh, for the full 18 months. And then looking at year two, it still shows a, a, a even more positive picture with the revenues that have come up in, in, SPLOS, in, in SPLOS year two. We're just right at the slow of $12 million. Um, is, was the projections of revenues was about 12.6. So we're just right at a half million dollars over overage on our revenues in SPLOS year two. And hopefully again, with. Um, the way the economy is going and looking going into the holidays, we'll continue to see an, an uptick in, in revenue. Uh, just real quick on the, the payment obligations. We made the first payment in October of $1.3 million. Um, April 1st, we'll make the larger payment of 16.3, which that'll be to bring the total for us last year too at $7.7 million. Now I'll start giving some updates on some of the on some of the projects. The digital radio system, Motorola is continuing to work on on uh, several of, of the fire station towers, uh, specifically uh, fire station five, eight, and eleven in Bill Art. Those are those are track along very well. They finally have towers still on site, and they'll be erecting some of that as we move towards the end of the year. Um, that's, from giving just a quick update on the properties that they've been working on, all steel gas and factory shows are, are complete. So we're move, moving forward with those two properties. And the chief is uh, is taking a trip up to Chicago with Motorola the first week in October. They're gonna do a three-day test on the equipment. Um, and that'll be the big kickoff of, of moving the project uh, to another phase once they get the equipment all checked out and uh, brought in. The, uh, the chief has received both ambulances. He was just showing us some pictures of those. Uh, this is already processed and in, 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 uh, in, uh, in morsing. <clears throat> the fire truck, the vendor was 10-8. Uh, we haven't took, taken delivery of the fire truck yet. Uh, there, it is located in one of their local shops up in Cobb County. 
we're expecting that to be delivered any day. Station three, um, as we reported last month, Titus Construction with his contractor, they've gotten started. Uh, so it's officially under construction. They started in, sep in September. They've got the new addition framed up and they've got it dried in. They, they put a top on it. Um, the, the critical path right now with the fire station is to get the, uh, the temporary housing in. We're still working with that and working with Bill and trying to get the uh, things finalized to, to, to get that uh, trailer completed and getting it over there so that we can move the crews out and get them in the temporary housing. All three, the chief had three vehicles that were uh, ordered in last year two and all three of them in and completed now. So this is, uh, and you'll see this in your report, we're now showing an index for completed projects. And this is what's being completed in, uh, in fire. Um, you can look down the list and read a few of those. Um, most of the, the, the renovation work was uh, just small type stuff like station two roof replacements. And then of course all the equipment that the chief ordered. <coughs> And then I've, this is a slide I've added um, for this presentation and I've given some handouts. Each one of you should have a handout uh, with you to, um, that's in addition to your, your, um, your report. So this is a, this is a good tool that the board can use. It's more than alphabet is going to provide it. Uh, and I'm not sure at what points we'll, we'll present it, but it'll give you an idea as we're trying to look at these projects and decide based on current numbers and current, current inflation is what they're going to do as we move through the programs. So in, in, in the, the fire, this is, this is all the projects that have been identified uh, for fire. If you look at the first column is uh, the initial budget that was set up several years ago. Then what we're forecasting for um, uh, is the second column, the revised budget, and the third column is a running total. So we've actually also got in here applied, uh, if we've got bids that come in and they'll reflect that like with the digital radio system, uh, it was budgeted at $16.5 million and it came in at $15.5 million. So that was a million dollar savings. So if you move down the list, I've separated out, the chief has a, 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 cat, a pot of money for renovations. What the blues are just showing you is what we currently have programmed and what's currently either been spent or we're forecasting to be spent. Uh, so in that category right now, we're right at $700,000 that's spent um, with a balance of 1.3 million. And then as you move down, uh, based on our numbers that we have, um, the, the projects at risk with the chief right now are the tow vehicle and Aaron light truck. We're just a little bit over programmed at 32, Mean 125, and we can we're not that concerned with that right now. So we'll I'll do this at the end of each program. Again, this will be something that we can um, hopefully be a good source for the for the commissioners to look at when we're having to make any adjustments or uh, in the program. So with that we'll move into transportation. Uh, the resurfacing program is moving along. C. W. Matthews. Um, is well underway. They have, uh, out of the eight roads, they've completed five. And right now they're working on Midway Road, South Sweetwater, and Thornton Way. So they're making, it looks like right now they're on track with the weather this week. They should be able to complete this before the, certainly before the end of the year. And then with the LMIG, we're tracking that, we're tracking the funds. Um, Douglas County Forces have completed 23 of the 88 roads that's on the list this year. And this, this is just a placeholder for the match that we did for the, um, for the LMIG money out of the SPOS funds. And we're tracking that. <coughs> Riverside Parkway street lights. We did get notification from Greystone that, um, that there was 100% of lights are, are burning and installed. We've even received their invoice. And we're still verifying that before we pay it, but we do have that in and we'll be uh, reporting on that next month. Hopefully that we can close that out. 
uh, Lee Road uh, Extension Study. This is the Clark Patterson as a consultant. Uh, getting some milestone dates for them. They're uh, November 30th. They're planning on submitting the planning document to DC staff for review and comments. Uh, that's November 30th, and then there'll be a presentation in January if everything's moving along as they as they've estimated uh, to the board for the for the final document. This is a place of manager. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I think. Is there a way we can, Mark, this is to the county administrator, can we accelerate uh, that ending? I, I, I think, again, Commissioner Mulcair, out, out of respect, I, I want him to weigh in on this or be able to see this document, so to push it into the, the first year, I just think that that, that is the work for what we're trying to accomplish as a board of commissioners for a continuity and a, a, a transition. If, if they can, I mean, we can get a pre-look before the final final, as we've always done in times past from the transportation studies, to you name it, we, and this is not you, but I'd like to see um, you know, us have a chance as, as this administration to make a final look on anything before the end of the year versus just kick it into the new year. Can we work on that, Mark? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll get something in uh, at the next yes. meeting, an update from the consultant and the planning zone. you okay? Yeah, and I'm available, of course, anytime. In, in the interim. Okay. All right. You want to thank you. I'm sorry. Madam Chair, we want that before the board. Or? Okay. Before the board. Yes, mm -hmm. ma'am. Commission Guy, you want to say yes. if you just hold Can we put phase one, phase two, phase three so we'll know because all of them's called Lee Road Extension. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and, and it's confusing. It's confusing to me, and I know it's got to be confusing to the public. What was the comment? Uh, she said, this is phase three, I assume. Is this the phase three? Extension, yeah. Yeah, the extension. You got Lee Road widening and then the Lee Road Extension. There's an extension and a widening. There's a widening and there's an extension. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Phase one was the it's bridge. It's not my district, so it's Widening is two. Extension is three. What was bridge, phase one? Bridge is one. Bridge is done. Ex bridge is done. Widening is two. Extension is three. Okay, and then four right. is going to Sweetwater. <clears throat> Going up, but I, I see what you're saying, though. You, you prefer yeah. to have it that way, so even though there are distinctions between. No, so, I'm sorry, I'll be. So that. when we're talking about it, right. the public knows right. what we're talking about. I mean, about. I, mean I, I, you're I, right. That's fine. fine. That's okay. Yeah. Mark, okay. can y'all clear that up for her? Yeah. Yes, so, sir. So that way she'll know. At least everybody will still know kind of what those phases are. Mm -hmm. so. Thank okay. you, Mark. We'll put mm -hmm. clarity around. Good. You may proceed. Okay. We're looking at. Uh, the intersections next. This is uh, Stewart Mill Road at Reynolds Road and Jacobs. If you remember, are the consultants on this? And they're moving along with the design, full design on it. They're working with some of the drainage issues out there and, and the proposed drainage. And uh, hope we'll be meeting with them just after Thanksgiving. Uh, so this, this part's moving along in the design uh, phase. I'm right now looking uh, early spring. They should have the design completed on it. Bright Star Road at John West Road. <clears throat> this continues to be in the right of way phase. Miguel and his staff's working on that. Hopefully, be completed uh, with with that phase of it um, in January and be ready to uh, advertise it for construction. <coughs> Sweetwater Church and Doris Road. This is a, a partnership between Douglas County and Pauling County. And again, we're we're in right of way phase with this intersection. Uh, finalizing plans, so we're tracking about the same time as um, as we are with Bright Star. Uh, hopefully, they'll be going uh, first part of the year uh, without any any complications with certifying the right away on. Chapel Hill Road. This is a uh, SEI is the consultant for that. It's it's in the design phase. It's a little bit. Uh, it's a bigger project, and we're still in the preliminary design phase with this. Uh, these next two, um, again, are identified projects uh, that we're, we're going to need to do some a uh, little bit more uh, design studies on. Miguel's uh, in the process. He has an RFP uh, that he's working on along with some others that he wants to get out on the street. So what, we need, what we're looking to do here, this is just the right turn lane as the scope of it. Uh, I mean, it, when Miguel can get that identified and scope nailed down, we'll get the RFP out for design for this, for this future project. 
Go ahead. You're going to say the same thing. Mr. Five, you can come here. If anybody was on Highway 5 this weekend, you will know that traffic was backed up to Home Depot one way, all the way down yeah. to uh, Stewart Parkway, the other. It, it's just <coughs> awful. This is something that is badly needed and it needs to be expedited. This Christmas is going to be, I can't even imagine yeah. how it's going to be. It's <laughs> just in normal. Normal. Normal it's days. Yeah, that, three lanes. That I'm not saying right three lanes, lanes deep. And it is just, it's, you yeah. can't get through an intersection because it, <clears throat> the it's line so of traffic blocks it. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> to to uh, Madam Guider's uh, previous point about uh, Lee Road, uh, we're talking about here Highway 5 Douglas Boulevard southbound. Oh no, this is we this North this back. Splice project is the northbound right turn lane. Okay, on the five <coughs> on Highway 5 turn right on the Douglas Boulevard. Yeah, because we, we have we have two projects, one moving along at a, at a, at a different pace. We have southbound and northbound. Right. So I would I would just ask we make a Make a notation on this. Right. Just put NB northbound, SB southbound, whatever. Yeah. How you back? Okay. Again, it's some overlap yeah. there with that GDOT project, the southbound project that's GDOT. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I thought that's what you were doing. Continue. Uh -huh. um, Highway 92 and Anawakey Road, again, is in Miguel Shop. And our position right now for this is to go out on the street for a scoping study, which um, it's which will it's, the purpose of a scoping study is to develop um, uh, that alternatives and cost uh, that the board can look at and make some decisions on moving forward or, or what we need to do with this project. So I do think it's a good idea to do it. We're, we're moving forward right now with at least getting that scoping study done and provide more information to the board in making decisions moving forward with it. Uh, the Post Road Bridge at Dog River is obviously the GDOT project, and we'll just keep uh, reporting on it and as we move forward. What about the right way? <laughs> on the bridge? <laughs> yeah. The, on the Post Road Bridge? <clears throat> uh, Miguel, you got any uh, update on? We're, we're getting appraisals now, so we can begin the acquisition process. Okay, because we're responsible for the right way. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> and also well, the future. Okay. We're going to have questions at the end. Okay. okay. You can continue. So the next three slides are our sidewalks. They're moving along. Um, Lithia Springs Elementary, Chestnut Log, and New Manchester. I'm reporting these together because SEI's got all three of them, and they're, they're doing them uh, concurrently. Uh, they finished with preliminary layouts um, and trying to set some construction limits on them and then identify we're probably going to end up with some uh, small uh, easements for these projects. Um, or so right now we're in, we're in the desi design stage with them and Miguel and I will be meeting with them uh, over the next couple of weeks to get updates uh, on, on all three locations. Mr. Gable, how long do you think it'll be before these uh, sidewalks will really, really come to fruition? This, we've been talking about these a while. I mean, I know we had to go with the design. I'm thinking sidewalks should take that long to. And we, I know well, Commissioner Mitchell uh, yeah, said I'm the same gonna, sentiment. I was wondering what's going on. <laughs> uh, you think sidewalk, but it, it is. These are a little bit more complex due to we're, we're adding the drainage uh, part with them. And uh, so. I'm, my best guess is they're going to have them completed. The design is going to be completed by the first of the year. And is the, the right of way take on it is what, it's what could slow it down. And we, we could easily, um, we, can, we can break these projects up and, and maybe let one before <coughs> the other. If we have one that has, say, an easement that needs to be yes, um, yeah. acquired. <coughs> so possibly first of the year, getting, getting it to that point, deciding which projects need easements or right of way. And maybe moving forward with the ones who, that that do not, and, and maybe get them under construction in the spring. Yeah, I'd rather that we not hold up all three because you can't get them. right. Just and start. I, that's right. And I think we thought too would be to do them individually so that we keep the cost down. Small contractors can bid on. Okay. 
love the contract. Thank you. All right, proceed. Uh, as far as equipment, Miguel's still waiting. Uh, he had a truck and a couple dump trucks, and of course, he, he added some mores and, and uh, their attachments, and all those are in fabrication. <coughs> In completed projects with transportation, you know, last year we had the 2017 resurfacing completed. We completed Riverside Parker at Rock House Road traffic signal, and then the equipment that Miguel had ordered. So here's the uh, the project list that we just looked at one for um, for fire. So all of them are going to look a little bit different depending on, on how the funds were set up initially or the, the projects. So. Transportation is primarily set up in buckets uh, throughout the whole thing. So, uh, for example, the transportation, uh, we the budget initially was $18 million. So we programmed that for $3 million per year uh, to spend for resurfacing. And we're on track now with that. 2017, 2018, we're right on target with the $3 million threshold. But as we move, as we move through that category and as the others, we'll program it and make sure that we stay within that $18 million threshold. And if you come on down the, the list for the economic development, uh, $10 million was what was initially programmed. We've identified and programmed three projects. So far, uh, you've got a, it shows the, the, the monies that have been spent and the balance at $9.5 million. And then with intersections and operations, where we have the most activity right now, We've got some numbers programmed in here and with those projects. We're currently setting that with the $15 million that was in the budget, the projects that are at risk within that category or uh, anything below Highway 92 and Anawake, which we, uh, you see the numbers that we've gotten, uh, we've gotten estimated for them. We cut it off at $15 million, which is what's in that pot. And as we move through that, we start getting more real numbers from the designers and certainly getting some projects led we, that yeah, this is a snapshot of what we've got right now uh, and then moving on down into that that last category is side, the sidewalk projects and roadway projects with that first one was the bridge at Dog River uh, it was originally estimated at about three million dollars so we've lowered that to five hundred thousand uh, dollars to cover the right of way and any, any other expenses the county may have and there's a school project so what we've estimated right now, what we got programmed, we're we're right at 3.4 million with a balance of 3. Point, say 3.6 million in that category. The pro I've got showed that separated with those sidewalks, but obviously right now we have funding uh, that we think we're going to be able to do all three of those. But we do we will need to get them programmed and get some <coughs> better estimates on them before we can uh, determine exactly how far down the list we can go. Commissioner, uh, Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Real quick, this is the conversation. Um, um, two things. Last week, um, during our Board of Commissioners retreat, uh, we had um, a presentation from our municipal advisors dealing with long term capital planning. And as you guys know, and this is just for the record, um, not necessarily for, for us here, um, we were committed to doing a better job of forecasting, uh, or not do a better job, but just strengthening our capacity to be able to do forecasting, estimation, making wise and quality decisions based on good information, um, um, on input you know, and output. Uh, that being said, and again, to that point, and I'm sure we'll get to it at some point, especially in our finance committee regarding uh, the long-term capital plan, um, right here with this, um, we know that estimates, um, cost of construction, cost of materials are going up. And a couple months ago, and it's probably been for the past 30 or 60 days or two meetings, I've called for uh, this type of tool to be able to lay out what the numbers are. Because when we originally came out with this list, and I gotta reiterate this, where we came from, uh, we sat in a room before we went to the rating agency and the county administrator, at our request, came up with a, a list of projects and an estimated cost right there on the dot, boom. We got to justify $70 million. Now, again, those were projects that were already in play. But again, there was no scoping. There was no, 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 no engineering. It's like, OK, let's do the best we can based on what we know. We're almost two years into this now, a year and a half, um, give or take. All right, now we got, a, we got a little bit different feel about this. And it's like, OK, guys. And the economy has shifted. <coughs> Things are becoming more um, costly. So I call for a, a, a re-forecast of the original list. 
Um, not necessarily an adjustment of things along the way, like, okay, we, we estimated this and this is the actual number. I appreciate that. But from a board of commissioner perspective, it's important that, okay, we, we started with this baseline. <coughs> that was a good baseline. Thank you, county administrator. But now that we're two years in, re-forecast the whole thing and give us a better understanding. So that means that if all these buildings that we're building, everything should shift up. <coughs> that means that what we thought, that the, our, our purchasing dollar has just gotten smaller. There's no way no one can tell me that. Now you may say something, Bill may say something, uh, the county person director, you may save something for us as we go through the process of RFQ, RFP, great job negotiating. But from a tool, as I look at this, this tool is so, I mean, so valuable, I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, gee, I don't know if that, that 92 Anawaki, I don't know, we should, we may need to rethink that, Commissioner Mulcair, and I, I just don't know the value on that, that's six million. We may need to throw that back in the pot. And so, I mean, again, this tool, it just gives us a tool to have a conversation. Uh, but this is, I'm looking at this glaringly and I'm like, ooh, there's some things in the yellow that's gonna get compromised. And then there's things that now that we get, we, we're into this, now we've got a different priority. We, as the Board of Commissioners, had no input in the actual original list. It was the administration presenting it to us. You know, our hand was dealt to us, no problem. But I think to take ownership of this and to really make sure that the citizens' needs are being met, <coughs> some of this stuff may need to be reshuffled based on needs. Some of this stuff may need to be taken out, which is I have no problem, at least from my committee, like, okay, Commissioner Walker, I'm really 50% think we need to, that, that. I can't see that right now, just not today. Yeah. So, Madam Chair, I'm just bringing up the point that right. this was a great tool. Mm -hmm. um, County Administrator, can you work with um, our, our, our program manager because some of these, I see some holes in some of these things that just, we're not trying to hold them to a scoping actual. We're looking for just, you take your best guess based on everything should inflate, let's say you inflated the whole list by 5%, 10%. I mean, whatever it is, we want to re-forecast. Can you do that and see how the numbers fall out? Yes, sir. In other words, wherever there's an empty, uh, empty space, we want an estimate from the administration not the program manager, because they're going to come back later and refine that. Commissioner Mitchell, does that sound about right? No, you, you asked no more, yes. That's all I want to make that yes. Okay, okay. I yield. okay. Commissioner yes. Bolt here. I uh, fully concur uh, with, with that uh, with the concept that, that Vice Chairman Robinson has presented, and, and he specifically mentioned, you know, Highway 92 and Wakey Road scoping mm -hmm. at, at an estimate of six. six, six, six that's the bill. Yeah, the, yeah. That's just the bill, right? Not the... Yeah, that's the, the scoping study is, and, and then the bill total is six million. Well, yes, that, that's the bill, and, and obviously that, that's the importance of the scoping study. It will start million. giving us some more information yeah. and, and yeah. looking at alternatives. Yeah, I, I concur that, uh, that, that in my opinion, that has a pretty low priority. If we need to do something specific with the existing intersection, mm -hmm. we have more turn uh, capacity, more storage, you know, that might be uh, a good move. Uh, but uh, I think money could be better allocated some other places that, that are more more uh, immediate and more tangible yes. in, in terms of result. So I yield back. Thank you. And County Administrator, we just need to circle back so that the uh, commissioners can have some input on those things that are pressing and important. So you'll work with us and pull that together. Yes, so you'll sit down and prioritize yes, we're, we're. because um, Mr. Gable can't carry this one. You all don't have to carry it so we can just tell them exactly <coughs> what we're expecting to be finished with. First, what's most important to us? That's what I want to say. Commissioner Geider, I know you have a comment. I see your hand. Yes, um, and I concur with what they're saying. And also um, I'm under parts and rec. Um, if I wanted to buy a Cadillac <clears throat> and then I go and see that it's way off my, out of my budget or my income level, then I go down to a Kia. <laughs> I'm just saying that some of these, um, well, like the Deerlick, uh, no, I'm sorry, the Recreational Center, 7.7 billion. Um, I know you, you had public input, but if uh, <clears throat> if I offer my constituents uh, a amphitheater rather than just a park, they're going to pick an amphitheater. Sometimes we have to use our knowledge of the income, the revenues, the expenditures, 
And some of these projects could, <coughs> might need to be cut down some to spend that much money in one area. And, uh, and uh, I think you had three <coughs> selections on the, is this the senior? That is the end of the park. This is the park. This is the park. That's the most part. It's not, I don't think it's fair when all the taxpayers are paying that one, per, one cent on the dollar that so much money is going just to one side of the county. Uh, I think we need to look at what is good for the county at whole. And there were a lot of parks that were promising things that they're not going to get. Um, uh, and we don't know yet about the pricing of some of those projects. I don't know that we've got uh, like the Bill Arp concession building or the uh, Fair Play Park concession. Are those set and go? Uh, those prices. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, well, next. Yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. Let's get to that point. Yeah, okay. Just, I'll have it up. Well, I, I was going to segue with them because of the fact that we were talking about uh, spending on projects and going with what we thought it was going to cost, and then finding out it was going to cost a lot more mm -hmm. uh, in the long run because of whatever you want to call it, inflation or just uh, because of a lot of contractors, they don't need the work. So it's yeah. a big process. <laughs> and commission, I believe if, if, we, uh, if you just allow me to go forward, we'll see that some of those projects have been scaled back and I'm quite sure uh, okay. Commissioner Mitchell will be able to speak to, uh, to Parks and Recreation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're moving to Parks. So Boundary Waters, uh, restroom and concession building, if you remember, it's it's um, it's under construction with integrated. They're doing a good job uh, right now, just doing some minor grading, but they're moving forward with it. Uh, we are thinking so far is is going well with that. The Boundary Water Soccer Field Lighting that project was also awarded to uh, West Georgia Lighting. We've already had a kickoff meeting with them out there, just right adjacent to the new concession building, um, and they have. Uh, They've ordered material, so that's that's going to be the, the critical path there. It'll take eight to ten weeks to get the poles and the lighting in, but that's ha that's been ordered, and right now they'll just they're on hold until that comes in. Uh, Deer Lick <coughs> Park Tennis Courts is uh, it's in a design phase with Carden Watkins. <laughs> it's really the preliminary design phase, and Gary and I are working with them trying to establish um, a, a preliminary layout. Uh, Get something that was within the budget here, uh, but it's moving along. And then the multi purpose rec center uh, again, it's in the design phase, obviously, uh, with Carter and Watkins. Um, we've changed slides here. We have gotten it with, I'm sorry, let me back up. This, this is a multi purpose rec center with uh, Pete Sutton. Um, it's in the preliminary design phase. This is one. This is what's on the uh, board agenda for approval um, to move forward with. Right now, we have based on um, the three schemes that that Sutton provided, which provided the the um, the basic layout of each one, uh, the square footage and the cost estimate. Um, the 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 committee had recommended scheme two, which is middle of the road, obviously. And a budget with it, so that's on the agenda for approval. Right now, we've got him on hold uh, until we, we get Gary and I get back with him as far as moving forward with the design development of uh, of Scheme Two. And then the senior centers right behind that. It is back with uh, Carter Watkins with them. Um, in both these projects, we did have uh, public information meetings. Uh, before we move forward with any design uh, development for for them, um, and the senior center is the same same place. It'll, both these projects look like they're going to track pretty close. Um, the one thing that may make a difference with them is is the length of construction. Um, and on the also on the agenda with the senior center is we had an increase uh, based on the, the preliminary layout that was approved. We had an increase in square footage, and Carter Watkins has asked for it. Uh, some additional design fee for that. And once we get that done, we'll be, we'll be moving forward with design development on it. 
And then Bill Mark um, is next with, um, it's under design with the same um, consultant or architect with uh, Fair Play, as you know. And we've got the, we've got the buildings basically designed. We're, in, we're doing some fine revisions on, the, uh, on the, uh, the design for them right now. I hope to get these out to bid, and this will just be the concession buildings out to bid for both these parks uh, at Bill Arc and Fair Play. So that once we get those in, we can it'll, again help us make some decisions on moving forward with uh, with the other improvements at the parks. The Fair Play lights uh, was bid out. The the bids that came in, and the review committee's got uh, a proposal that's on the agenda for approval moving forward with a contract for that. So we were able to get we had a <coughs> rush on this, and um, we're able to get it designed and get get it out to bid and. We've got a pretty tight uh, completion date on in 90 days. So this, once we get make an award for this, we'll this project gets kick off pretty quick. And then as far as uh, Gary's equipment, um, I think he, on the agenda again is there's a remaining budget for a security system that you'll see, and it'll wrap his uh, wrap his equipment up for the splash year two. <coughs> And then we've completed projects right now. As you saw on the in, uh, what's been invoiced, we've just got a few projects that's been complete, actually completed uh, in parks plus the equipment that's been purchased. And then the, this will be my last slide. Um, so this is our overall program for parks. Um, and as you move down this list, you can see we. <coughs> We're, the target is $17 million. So the revised budget, if you look down at the bottom, uh, if, you, if you total what we have, have shown there, it's you over-programmed by $700,000. It's your $7.7 .7 million. And that is making an adjustment in the multi-purpose rec center and showing the, the fencing, which we have not, it's designed, but we have not let for um, Bill Off and Fair Play. So based on that right now, all these projects are at risk and the fencing at Bill Arp and Fair Play are at risk projects. Um, we, you know, Gary and I were talking about it. We might have a chance to get the fencing in based on this budget, but we'll need to move forward with some, with some letting up some other projects to do that. Okay. Any questions from the board? Commissioner Geiger? I know this is no okay, the yellow means at risk. At risk. Okay, so that's the part, the old part uh, that the concession stand there thing that's about to fall yes. down is not going to, it's, it's at risk. It's at risk. You don't have some mad people out there. <laughs> that's the, um, one of the, old, that's the oldest park around in the, in the county. So they're going to be very upset about this, especially when they see the projects that's going on the other side of the county. Are you back? Okay. Uh, Commissioner Robertson. Yeah, I, we'll, we'll, we'll keep it in the middle. Um, if you think about this, as we, Commissioner Mulcair appreciate it, life before um, the class of 2010, we, there was a rule about new parks in the county, and they were going around, right? So, Boundary Water was a new park. Lithia Springs, which you inherited, was a new park, right? And District 2 never got a new <coughs> park. I was next on the list. Now, courtesy of the redistricting, I inherited <laughs> Boundary Water. Let's keep this real, right? So, the concentration, I, I, I can fix that real quick, you know, hold that thought. But, but my, my, my point being is that we under, nothing was promised down the list. When we, we started this process and, and Mark came to us and said, Commissioner Robbins, can we use your town hall meeting to kick off this blast? And I said, absolutely. And we went out there. This is in six, I mean, right, right during that period of time uh, in 16. This list did not exist. Nothing was promised. We knew we wanted the administration, wanted the radio station. They knew they wanted to come back around that. 
we know Mark, you know the community center, because I took a beat not there, because they've been asked for for three, three years in my, my district. Not a park, but a center, all right? Not a park, but just a center, all right? We talked about that. And some of the other, the fire station has always been out there. We just never had money coming through a recession, et cetera. All right, so we went fast forward. Nothing was promised. Ken was very clear. Let's not go down the path. We, we took the advice that we got. We went with percentages. That means there was nothing on the list going into the referendum. Nothing was promised. We go through this process, come through new administration. We come in 17, we go into to New York. Mark, Mark and Jennifer, they gotta come up with this, they gotta refine this list for us to justify 70 million. Then we put in all the details. We've already been awarded, to, I mean, the, the, the public has already given us like, okay, y'all go ahead and work on it. These are, most of the stuff is maintenance that we never did over time. We're confusing the difference between capital, which is what the splosses were big ticket items versus stuff that we just never got through during the recession. That's life. There's no promise. So, I mean, again, I respect each commissioner, home rule, what your narrative is back to your constituents. No problem. But as it relates to, you know, it's like, no, it wasn't promised. Right? It comes down the list. Some things, as inflation comes up, that means some things you can't do. It, 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 it's no indictment of anything. It could have been anybody. Anybody could have advocated a, a senior center. Anybody could have advocated uh, a, a community center. It just happened to land here. That's what was advocated for. But it's not an indictment for everything else. But I, again, I'm going to leave it there. I get it. I think we're just going to be on two different positions with that. But I want to make sure that the public knows the, the, the history, the true history of how this evolved. Nothing was promised. We're not going into that referendum. And with only these top capital items, and the rest is just maintenance that never had gotten to. I yield. Okay. Um, there may be a possibility, and I'm just thinking out loud, um, because we are exceeding our targets each month. Where would that residual money go? Would it would, we, would it be allowed to be shifted into some of these projects, projects that we're not capturing, Mark, right now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, but it would, be, at, it would still be split it, by the same percentages. Right. Yeah, so we, I'm going to think positive right now. We may just uh, hit land on a positive, I, 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 I even kill Mark for all of us. So let's just think positive. Here. Okay. Any other? Well, Any top other of meeting, uh, David Good has got us a quick update with yes. this. Yes, uh, We'll let him come up real quick. Thank you, Mr. Good. Please come forward. Thank you, Mr. Gable. Sure. Great job. All right, I'm David Good, the Communications um, Director for the SPLOS Program. Um, as you see up here, we have uh, 60 current vendors. 40 of them are considered uh, local, meaning in county and within 30 miles, and then the other 20 are outside of the local area. Um, let's go to the next one. All right, right here you see that we actually represent 66% of the projects are actually um, local, and then the other, um, what is that, the other 34%. Is considered outside of the county. And right now, we definitely make sure you take all efforts in order to let local vendors know what's going on, what type of projects are coming on, and basically how to do business with the county, you know, just from our level. And then when they contact the curator, they're able to get even further information. Uh, right here is actually a list of all the county uh, projects. And, and these are going from, you know, as simple as the Douglas County um, LMIG because we are collecting money for the LMIG, so it's included on here. And if you're looking at it, basically a total, Douglas County vendors equal out to being about one, a little bit over one million. Within 30 uh, miles is about 9.8 million. And then that totals the local vendors of $10.8 million. Um, dollars. And then, of course, you see the percentages of the money. 65% is outside of the county, outside of, um, and outside of local. And most of that 65% is actually going towards uh, Motorola. And right now, that's um, showing about $15.5 million. And all the monies that you see here is actually everything that's been on the purchase order or they've been invoiced, meaning that if we haven't paid the total invoice, the numbers still show here. And then this is the percentage of active spots with minority contractors. 74 percent is non-minority, and then 26 percent is minority. And with that, I'll take any questions. And hope I didn't move too fast. 
Commissioner Robinson. Yes, yeah, real quick on, on your minority, and this is a conversation I, and I'll yield to the colleagues and even weigh in. <clears throat> so, and again, I'm going to go back to the jail. And I think it was somewhere between 28, 33% that we realized minority participation. All right, so let's look at it. You've got prime contractors, then you've got subcontractors, then you've got task order people fulfillers, you know, in other words. So what we're looking at here are really what? Contractors, primes? Correct. The people who are awarded a contract, right? So it's what it was that number, 74% or? 74% um, is not minority. I got it. All right, so 74%. But below that, um, and I'm thinking about teaming and things like that, if, the, if a prime um, contracts or subcontracts with a minority firm, how do you, are you able to capture that and maybe our director of purchasing? Like, do we have a requirement in our RFQ or our policy for reporting optionally or whatever case be? How would we capture that and how do we do it back on the jail? Because again, we have a precedent. This is not new. So, can somebody weigh in, please? Well, this is Bill Peacock, the yeah. purchasing director. Uh, we do not um, have a mechanism um, where we uh, identify uh, the subs that a general contractor uses. Okay. We have language in all of our contracts that stresses the county's desire to meet certain levels of minority participation. Right. For DBE participation. Mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. um, and we always, if it's a federal contract, we always adopt the federal, the FTA guidelines and think the same thing with the state. We adopt the state contract, uh, the state DBE requirements. Um, but uh, we, we today don't have a way to track uh, what vendors a general contractor would use. Um, so by adopting those federal and state, how do we enforce it? How do we, how do we in inspect or check to ensure some at least good faith compliance, whether it's quarterly, biannually, annually, in the contract? I mean, or is it we just, if nobody say nothing, we we'll worry about it. I mean, how do we do that? As part of the contract, there's actually a, a DBE form that the, the general contractor has to submit and they do the names of the subs, the minorities, uh, or DBEs he's going to use. Yep. Uh, and then at the end of the contract, we we ask, you know, uh, as far as what they were able to do, what percentages uh, that they were able to accomplish, um, and that's about the best we that's about the best we do right now. We we don't have any other enforcement tool in place. All right. So we we award the contract and we just put this, you know, sort of a. Woo, like, you know, hey, we, we prefer this, but we have no real incentive along the way. Like, look, you're not meeting your expectation because if you get to the end of the contract, you know, it, it, we, we really don't know, right? We, 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 we could have probably been up to 50% on the deal if we had a, a mechanism. Um, I just want to bring that. Clarify that. Yeah, please. Please. For the for the federal and the state, there is enforcement. Okay. And we do report back on those. Okay. There are forms that the, con the general contractor has to submit that actually lays out what percentages that they've been able to accomplish on the federal and state, but just in general contracting, we don't have anything in place. Well, something like this, boss, and I'm going to just my last thing. Why can't we have a form mm -hmm. that we require? And I'm sure it's a policy that we all can sort of craft pretty quickly and adopt. Adopt, you know, it says that at least on a quarterly or maybe biannually. I mean, depending, well, the speed of these projects, usually probably quarterly is best. Uh, we'll, we'll lean on your recommendation, but I don't see why we can't have the same expectation, especially about home. So people could, I mean, I get federal and state. So you come up here and get a big contract, and it's like, no, we want you to really use local. We really want you to use women-owned. We really want you disadvantaged business enterprise. Uh, or, but I think you guys get the, my point, is that while we're talking about it, I think this is something legislative we should be able to take up pretty, if we're serious. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'm sure I'll yield back. Anybody else who wants to leave? Okay, Commissioner yes. Mitchell. And we are serious, and we've had this kind of conversation. So, I'm like you. Why, why can't we take a look at the uh, the federal, or just at least that's a, a a decent blueprint that we can kind of take a look at to possibly, you know, incorporate it. In, and that's probably a legal question, Ken. That that we, to me, it's it's simple. Just asking the question. Now, I guess it's going to be one of those. Will they be honest enough to tell us kind of where they are? 
because we just need these kind of numbers to prove, to show the general public that, that we are really looking at local, we're looking at minority, and we're, we're trying to do our due diligence as we do with the jail. So I don't know, Ken, is that, is that? Is that well, <coughs> I think you can do it okay. All right. based on the Fed and the state doing it yes. until it's challenged by somebody. I thought the underlying question, the, the, the DBE is easy, I think, because mm -hmm. you have to fill out forms, you yes. have to provide proof that you qualify. That's that's an easier step. I thought the the next step was going to be the actual employment of people. You know, that's a little bit harder because you do not have to put race down as part of the underlying employment thing. Right. That that's where it's a little bit trickier. Right. But as far as DBE, I think we could adopt the state or federal guidelines. I think we can put it in our policy. I think we can put it in our bid structure. Mm -hmm. I think the question becomes on a you know bigger project. What the the the, the downside is? You got to enforce this early because you can't have a project that's half built yeah, sorry, and then right. say okay we're no, going to cancel point. a contract because you, well, you got to stay on it early is what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, we've already been asking the right. question earlier on, but now we see that the information that we're getting is kind of sort of like. Okay, we think we got a number. You, you tie that report to their draws. Yes. yes. They don't get paid if they don't submit the report. Simple right. as that. So, so I guess to our initial uh, conversation earlier, we just tie it that way and, and you know put it up amongst. So so these guys can kind of capture that and get it to cut the sub to the sub to the subs. Who yeah. knows? I would recommend if you adopt a policy, you, you can't do it retroactively. No. You're going forward contracts. Okay. Yeah, but I think that's something we can right, do. Right, right. And I don't think we're trying to go backwards. And I think we yeah. Yeah, I think the contracts could be tied to the draw schedule. It, you don't get the draw. That's a requirement for the draw is the submission of completion <coughs> plans and certifications, blah, 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 and that report. <coughs> you all right with that, Bill? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we, uh, I think we're going to write a report. Yeah. yeah. So we probably need to have something drafted up from y that y'all bless that we can bless and put on okay. the agenda and make it. We could adopt an ordinance. Mm -hmm. That's all it, it would have to be probably an ordinance to be enforceable. Okay. That's, 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 that's not an issue with me. I mean, so. Until somebody says no, the answer is yes, Commissioner Mitchell. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I yield back. Okay. Certainly, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, uh, myself and Director <clears throat> Beaton had these uh, conversations about DBE and MBE uh, early on in, uh, when I started in 2017. So, thank you. This is moving in the right direction with the ordinance. So, we, we, we've been. <coughs> so the, the other issue I remember about the jail, and I, I say this, but there, Georgia has a, um, this issue can't, comes up in employment, that mm -hmm. you can't condition employment based on where somebody lives, just like Mark can't be conditioned on where he lives, we can't condition. And we're not trying yeah. to. Yeah. That, 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 so we got some collateral stuff uh -huh. that buttress up, but that's not the question that you're asking. Yeah. I'm just telling you, there's right. a little bit of wall, but it's not the question you're well, we asking. We've incentivized them. And I apologize for talking no, to you, know, but we've incentivized them to, to even hire Douglas billions, as I call it. So, well, the incentive scale under state law is for supplies and goods that are produced locally. You can have, I think, a two percent margin. Is it three? Three percent. Right. But that's state law. You couldn't create an ordinance that allowed more than that because then you run into the threshold of employment based on where somebody lives, right. and you, that's something that's been outlawed. I'm only saying that we incentivize those. That you hire, if you hire somebody right. that lives, work, I mean, lives in Douglas County, then there's a tax credit. I don't know the exact mm -hmm. number or the exact amount or whatever that is, but okay, sounds good. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's that's what we're saying. Three, mm -hmm. three. Okay, percent. sounds good. Three, three sounds good. That's too. already in the books. That's, right. that's exactly. Yeah, that's on the books. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if there's nothing else, oh. I just know that on page 88 <coughs> is where the community outreach starts. If you want to see some of the things I'm doing out in the community, you can turn to that document and you'll be able to see. Okay, thank right, you. Thank you very much. Thank you thank so much, uh, um, Mr. Good. Thank you so much. All right, that's the end of our splash update. Mm -hmm. We'll move on to our next topic, which is approval of uh, minutes. Uh, Board of Commissioners, please take a look at the minutes and be prepared tomorrow to approve accordingly. Uh, County Administrator, do you have any business? No, no, ma'am. Uh, County Administrator just had one question for you. Can you give us an update about the ruling, uh, uh, our last lawn care? I call it last cut. I noticed some cutting going on through the through the uh, mm -hmm. county. Uh, you may want. I know you're under the weather. Uh, uh, yes. Can you just give us an update? 
Sure, but they're uh, working on the last mowing cycle, <coughs> the last cut that we usually try to get done so that uh, we go through the winter without having uh, to have another one because we're, uh, we only pay for, for so many. And uh, we've also uh, <coughs> ordered the equipment to be ready for spring with the new tractor, so things are uh, marching along. Uh, I think they've done a, a good job this year. Uh, the in-house forces have stepped in uh, many a time uh, to address uh, more immediate issues. <coughs> I think that combination has been working out uh, pretty well. Okay. Any questions from the board regarding our uh, last mowing? Uh, oh, well, it, it, um, can, uh, it re refers to the last mowing kind of in, in an oblique uh, sense, and that is that uh, you're hiring for staff, and uh, we, the uh, fire and EMT organization we're discussing the minimum age uh, for drivers and the implications for our liability insurance, and I, I think we can look forward to some relief in that regard of being able to hire uh, younger employees to be able to staff mm -hmm. without okay. without insurance. I thought I thought you in particular. If you want to add to that, uh, well, I think it ought to apply to all departments. Absolutely, <coughs> and that and that was that was my position. It would apply to all departments, not just fire and EMTs. So that was going back to the uh, safety committee. Yes, 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 safety uh, committee. Yeah. Okay. So that may be bring some relief for you able to staff. That, that would be a great. Uh, and what's the turnaround on this? Because uh, we've run into that situation where somebody is uh, almost there to 21 or 20 plus. Uh, we would have otherwise hired them, but for that situation. Um, we have a recommendation. Yeah. yeah. We have a meeting tomorrow and today at 2 30. I'll look at my calendar. But I'll and then we'll determine, but that, that's one of the questions I had for the safety committee. I said, why do we have age restrictions? I said, you got fresh 18-year-olds, you know, they're excited, ready to go. This generation, we have mm -hmm. to move the needle, and certainly that's what moved us, uh, moved the safety committee to look at it, because I said, you know, we have fire and EMS positions that can't be filled, simply because they're not 21, but if they can work at 18. So uh, um, Matt LeBurn, I believe, has checked that out and found that there's no additional responsibility <coughs> associated with you being 18. In fact, it's a luxury to be 18. I would love to be 18 mm -hmm. again, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on it. It's, and, and I'll uh, give you all a report as soon as possible, but you need today. I believe it's today. No, isn't it that it's not today, it's tomorrow. I have tomorrow mm -hmm. at 2.30. No. All right. Madam Chair, I, yes. I just uh, reiterate there was some sense uh, among some people that, that we res uh, restrict this uh, initiative, this change to a uh, fire EMT and uh, Speaking for myself, I'd be in favor of uh, all uh, county employment. Now, there might be internally to a department some rest restrictions that you might say, well, we're not going to let an 18-year-old drive the paper. Right. 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 Yeah. Or something like that, yeah. So, but that would be managed. Yeah, but I think it needs to be across the board. So I, I yield back. Okay. All right. We'll move on to business <coughs> items. Uh, the Okay, Vice Chairman. Yeah, I, again, this is this is pop, and I, I get the spirit of it. Uh, again, but there's something about age and um, maturity, and I, I get you can be big and strapping, and you can carry 150 pounds and, and do those things. Uh, I, I just in our in our it, it's sort of in our our quest to hit numbers to fill these positions. I, I want to make sure. That I, I trust that department heads, because this is what you do, that these people, the, 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 the target, they're mature enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Trying to that, well, I know there may not be a monetary liability or risk, it's like, are they mature enough? The point of the 21 year old was to give a person a little bit more seasoning beyond the scope of uh, coming out of high school. But we, to that point, everybody's not going, they, they, they got different paths, different generation. I get it. So I'm not. I'm not but, I want, but there's still something about maturity, enough life cycles to understand, like, okay, I mean, do you get it, right? Because government is serious, right? And I know there's some serious people uh, and serious minds and young minds, and there's all they need to be putting the right soil and the right leadership around them and, and to nurture them and they flourish. No problem with that. But I just make sure that whoever is part of this committee that you debate 
and not just get caught on one side of it that, okay, we're going to fall in love with the policy because we get the portfolio, but we don't look at the other side and say, okay, let's, let's balance the argument. Let's make sure that, to your point, uh, I, I just, I'm, I'm always, you've always heard me say, I have a problem with countywide, I mean, blanket policies, where there's three acres in a minimum that's across the whole, like, no. So think about this one. Um, I'm just, I, I mean, are we, are, are we unnecessarily setting ourselves up that like, no, I know you can do it, but are, are they mature enough to do some of this and that we have, we won't expose ourselves? But maybe it's discretionary. Mm -hmm. Are you? Okay. Yeah. Madam Chair, I'd like to respond to that. Yes, you can. I, I think that was that was the point of my remarks was that it's, it's an issue that the department head needs to manage. <laughs> and I reference particularly like the paver, there'd be some equipment that you want the more mature season mm -hmm. uh, operator on. And then, then you have pickup trucks and, and, and tractors and stuff like teenagers drive those things all the time, or perhaps even high school. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, it's certainly something that needs to be managed to closely by yeah. managed. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I agree you have to manage this. I was in surgery at 18 years old, passing instruments to surgeons, and I, I mean, that's big, that's big uh, game hunt. And you know, so it, they trusted me at 18 years old to go in surgery to stand mm -hmm. over and protect your life or to pass instruments and determine your next breath. I, I'm comfortable, but we could, I, I trust my um, directors to have, they're going to have to hold them a little bit and guide them. You know, you're going to have to take them under your wing. So that's our expectations. They need to be trained accordingly before we allow them to just be a turn to loose. Commissioner Guy. Yes, ma'am. And um, also there was a training component to, to uh, a, extra training, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, defensive driving or whatever. Yeah, you're back. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to move on to the next uh, business item. Yeah. Well, the first business item, num tab number four, authorization to approve a contract with Titbit LLC for the Family Journal FEJ program at a total cost of $12,000 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Judge Peggy Walker. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. I had the opportunity to feature some of our work on Channel 46, and Kevin Strauss contacted us and indicated he had a tool for us called the Family E Journal. Uh, those of you who deal with the younger generation are aware that they don't do talk therapy very well and they don't do telephones very well, but they email and they text. Mm -hmm. So this is a tool for us to utilize that type of uh, communications to strengthen relationships between parents and children, but we're particularly planning on using it in our drug court so that we can rebuild family relationships that have been destroyed by the absence of trust. This is an offer for us to get it at, basically it would have been $25,000, but because of the fact that we are a government entity and we have limited budgets, <coughs> he has offered it to us at a discounted rate and there is money left in the budget from this year, which is the reason that I asked to do it out of this year's budget to see if it is the has the value that he says it will have in helping our families reconnect. That is the essence of what I'm requesting. Thank you. It's self-explanatory. Any questions from the board commissioners? No objections. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Tab number five, authorization to acquire three high vision security systems, uh, should I say security cameras for the installation at Clinton Nature Park uh, Reserve or Preserve at a total cost of uh, $3,070. $3,075 to be funded with the 2016 splash bonds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee. Um, Director Dukes? Yes, ma'am. Um, we've had a number of break-ins in the parking lot out of Clinton Nature Preserve, so we're requesting three additional cameras. We have some security cameras there, but they're focused on different areas, uh, playground and uh, restaurant facilities, so we feel like this would uh, go a long way uh, towards the prevention of break-ins and uh, we're also working with the sheriff's department on this and we're having uh, surveillance signs put up uh, not letting people know that the uh, area is under surveillance that comes as a recommendation as you said from the uh, recreation oversight committee commissioner Guy, i believe you have a question for me. yes uh will there be uh, any um retention of the video yes <clears throat> is that specified in the contract yes uh how many days i think it's 90 days uh should it be 180 um well, we'd have to go back and uh look at the uh, <coughs> contract and see if there's an additional cost for more uh because uh, of the 
if there's a case brought before uh, a court or something like that, it may take longer than 90 we can days certainly, to... We can certainly go back and, and uh, talk to the uh, company and see what they can do. Okay. Uh, did the sheriff's office have a recommendation? Well, I can tell you this, Ms. Guider, if it's a criminal case and we're going to prosecute, we're going to retain a copy of that video. It's going to be placed in the evidence so it won't be a question. Um, 90 days, 180, I realize 180, you, you're going to pay more to maintain that storage file for a while. But I believe our investigators uh, can obtain that video prior to 90 days. <coughs> Okay, so if, if there is a case, you're saying that you're going to automatically retain it anyway? It, it should be automat automatically retained in place in evidence. <coughs> they usually contact us within a couple of days after the break-in to see if we have footage. Yeah. All right, I get back. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to add. Just, just to add, so the, the bigger question I think what we're alluding to is, will the, the information be stored automatically after 90 days so it won't get lost hypothetically you know the, the break-in may happen but we may not be well not about the break-in something may happen but we are not notified until after that time frame like can we go back x will that be stored somewhere i mean not stored in the video where you guys have access to it that was that we stored it somewhere though gary is that is that doable it's digital so it does have the capability of being stored okay so that way you won't ever lose it if it was after 90 days or 60 days or whatever else to say hey can you go back on you know august 12th and pull that you know because something happened that we're trying to find some roundabout time frame or something that, that that's correct and i don't know what the uh the uh, fee would be but i'm sure it's going right. to be now that was my next question so is there a cost in the storage or is that you may want to direct oh, it there yeah. okay <laughs> i see director he's chomping at the bit there to say something <laughs> okay so real quick okay there's a code section with the georgia archives is lg01042 which requires all digital video recorded by the county to be retained for 180 days so we have pushed that requirement through the fire department uh, okay. When they put the surveillance in this building, when right. they did surveillance over at um, at the new annex, so, so, so we're our required. standard yeah. is 180 days right. based on requirements from the Georgia Archives. Yeah, so we we, we so got it, in. and then maybe well, you got to have the equipment to store that stuff. <coughs> Correct. Well, so if the quote was made less than with less than 180 days retention, that quote needs to go back to the vendor. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you. How about, can I ask, uh, sure. how about the existing equipment we have in the parks uh, before this, uh, I mean, we've got a number of cameras, isolated cameras out in the parks that have been there for years. Right. Are those, uh, what are we doing? The Georgia Archive requirement is 180 days. So if there's existing, perhaps we need to address that, uh, it's 180 day requirement. That's all. So we need to be looking at updating our cameras in our yes. parks. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or at least the storage. Yes. It's right. not so much yeah. the camera, it's the actual storage device. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I, I, I would like the um, Parks and Recreation Committee to pick that up. I know yeah, you yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, we'll move on to tab number six, authorization for Sudden Architectural uh, Services Incorporation to proceed with scheme two for the design development of the Boundary Waters Recreation Center at an estimated cost of $7,185,375 as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorized the chairman to sign all related doc documents. Director Deuce. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as you said, after a lengthy discussion, the Recreation Oversight Committee recommends scheme two at an estimated cost of seven million one hundred eighty-five thousand three hundred seventy-five dollars. Okay. Any questions from the board, Commissioner? Uh, yeah, I, I, I acknowledge. Um, you know, as I, I, you guys know, I do. Uh, I, I respect the committee's um, recommendation. Um, uh, and while the citizens um, uh, made a choice, um, I'm going to. Uh, make sure alongside of that, 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 that there should be compromise. And we've made compromise here in recent times um, for the buses and everything else um, that, that gets us to a certain place. So I respect the work that was done on the committee. But, but that being said, I, I think it's important, again, one more time, when this first started, um, okay, so 16, about 2013, when I was having those seven, eight uh, um, uh, 
town halls every year out there, and one was in Anawaki. And they were asked, and this is in the middle of the um, recession, they says, well, when can we, you know, we'd like to have um, indoor facility, uh, because again, it's a, it, it, it was a different um, generation that was coming online out east. And it was one of those, well, we'll put on a list, um, I said, you know, again, we don't have any money at this time, but if we ever get to a SPLOS, perhaps that was a priority. And I asked every year for all my citizens to weigh in on that process, and that was always there, but we knew we couldn't get it there. And I remember one time, one citizen sort of like, okay, well, you know, hey, well, you know, where is this at? And I said, well, well, I tell you what, won't you do some work? Why don't you come up with a plan and lay out what you thought? Well, the citizen sat there like, okay, I'll be right back. And Gary, I think you recall, I sent that to you. Um, her name was Michaela Braggs. Uh, she was on one of the steering committees, in that fact. She designed one with input, right? So one more time, we didn't offer the citizens a Cadillac. The citizens said our expectation, okay, well, here's what we're looking for. So I don't deal my citizens their hand. I advocate their voice. Now, I recognize we have limited dollars. So me bringing that advocation forward, and in the scheme of dollars and fairness, then that's when you have committees and you have different people that like, okay, come on, Kelly, you got to round that out now. I have no problem with that. But I want to make sure always the narrative is, is accurate, that there's not fake, this fake narrative about how things evolve, at least not east. Um, and so I, I think that was important to acknowledge the work that was done by committee as well as the citizens who said, guys, you know, you guys did a great job. I think everybody will be satisfied by the output, Gary. I, um, uh, I, I think um, what I heard was uh, it'll be a good product regardless. Um, yes, we, everybody wants the Ferrari. I mean, yeah, yeah, I get that. But in the scheme of things, my question is, is there room in this in, in the future, uh, future life down the line, future administration, if they want to just like with the senior center across the street, could it be expanded for additional scope later? That's yes. my question. Yes, all, all the schemes have been designed for expansion <clears throat> down the road. Okay, if future administrations choose to do so, like we chose to pick up and, and, and expand that senior center by 5,000 square feet with a grant, I think it was, uh, we have that option. So since that's being said, I <clears throat> you know, thank you guys for your help. Thank you so much. I support you. Commissioner <clears throat> just asked a question. What was the price for scheme one? I, I don't know. 6.7 million. 6.7 million. Okay. And, uh, and scheme uh, three was uh, 8 million. Yeah, 8.1 or, you know. It doesn't include the, um, the what was it? Because a scheme one, we didn't include the elevator. No elevator or no right. fitness one. Scheme three, because I'm going to reverse gold. Yeah, gold had, um, had everything that the uh, citizens originally had. Uh, but instead of an include the, um, the design. No. no. Okay, no, no, no. I just want to make sure that, that you clearly get that part. Go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. I mean it. Well, <coughs> I didn't hear the answer. I'm sorry. Uh, you're saying that the first right. one did not have an elevator in it? Correct. Right. But Correct. Um, did the first scheme have a second floor? Yes. It had, yeah, it had a running track area. Mm -hmm. Cause there's no, no yeah, there's a, center. plenty of right. running space out there already uh, outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I just wondered why you chose Scheme two over scheme one. Well, well the uh, you could have had the chairman to have. Uh, no, right here. Okay. I'll, I'll tell me that. Okay. Madam Chair, I'll respond. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, scheme two, we felt was was meeting the best expectations of most most of the people in that. We provided uh, <coughs> exercise uh, area off off the main floor. Uh, that's it right there in the middle, mm -hmm. and uh, and also a ba bathroom and, and an elevator. Uh, the uh, scheme one, as we said, did not did not have an elevator. Mm -hmm. and I guess I guess you I guess you'd have to take steps up to the second up to the second floor right. uh, for the running. <laughs> I guess you could include that part of your exercise going up the steps to to run. Mm -hmm. uh, we just felt like. Uh, including an elevator up front mm -hmm. uh, was cost effective compared to adding an elevator again to Commissioner uh, Robinson's point. You had money and had the desire and the political will 
to upgrade the uh, rec center going to do very expensive to add an elevator as opposed to just an additional room for meeting space on the ground floor. But this so, has two, two courts rather than just one court, which is... No, they both, they, they all have two. They all, they all have two courts. Mm -hmm. I think, but I think the main difference really and the main impetus was providing that elevator for more usable space up, upstairs as opposed to trying to do it at a later date when the elevator you'd have to do a lot of destruction to the existing design to, to include an elevator later. So we, we particularly want to include an elevator. Do you want to add anything? Yeah. Uh, yes, Chairman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To include uh, Vice Chair, uh, it was scheme to kind of, you can grow into it, and which will grow out to be the goal. So it, it had all what I call the Cadillac makeup but we didn't have to build it out until at a later date. So the dollar is essential. Now here's, what, here's an ideal scenario though. Why don't we take the money from the jail, the $100,000, add it to this project and complete the majority of a gold project. But as a committee, we thought it, would, it made more sense so that we didn't compromise the projects, at least of the bulk of the projects down, down, the, down the tunnel that we do it this way to kind of accommodate the wishes from those who came out and stated what they would like to see, what all the great things that could be. Because scheme two, it could be scheme three, or the goal scheme, as I'll call it. Because it's there, it's designed to build out. That's the whole design. And we thought about your scenario of not getting to some of the projects down the, down the line. So the only way we could accommodate that was to be somewhere in the middle to kind of get, get down the line. That doesn't guarantee it, but at least the thought process was there when we do this whole process. Okay. Yes. Okay. And again, but but, but it's, I mean, again, we 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 underestimated. Um, based on it was the common knowledge that we knew right now, we guessed at what it would be. <coughs> Thank goodness you walked out the room and there was advocacy, like we better take that thing to 17%, exactly right. we're not gonna make it. Exactly and I think right. you guys remember that. And I'm like, okay, y'all heard what Commissioner Mitchell said, we need to change that percentage, and we yes. went with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's so, all, mm -hmm. Mr. Deuce, I mean, I, I think we, we, we did the best we could based on the information that we had. Mm -hmm. It was right there in that moment, right? And so, and, and, but, but and things have inflated. What we knew then are totally different now. You didn't right. have to, uh, uh, a Mercedes Benz or a Sun Trust coming. I mean, when that hit, it just changed the whole dynamic. So at the <coughs> time, it was accurate. But we're, what we you can't do is punish the citizens for the sake that that's our job. And they asked for what they asked for. And I, I think we did a good job, but no different than on the jail on the other side. We, we overbuilt that. Right? So again, one, we <coughs> underestimated, the other, we overestimated. And it's sort of a balancing act. But I think this administration has done a pretty good job of trying to do the best it can with forecasting, with better information. Yes. Um, so I don't want to, I mean, I, I want to be sensitive that, again, what we talked about, everybody advocated for what they thought up front. <coughs> Everything down the list is not entitled to it. We That's may correct. not get to it. It's mm -hmm. maintenance. Sometimes, like, okay, I can't do this right now. It will be non-ending the needs of administration. But the citizens, look, I want to experience my tax dollars. I want to be able to take some of my children. So I, I know that y'all got work to do back there and all this stuff, but this is what I asked for. I've set your priority. So, with, with, you know, again, so I'm sensitive to say, well, you told me what you want, which means these things down here don't get done. They're involved in that conversation, but I don't want to belabor it. I, again, I think you guys did, you know, again, I, if I had to advocate and be biased for my citizens, but you made the right choice. You made the right choice. Well, I, just, I, mean, I, I just, I never yielded back. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She keeping track. I'm still in the, okay, the conversation. Yeah, yeah, you're still in the conversation. Here. All right. But um, maintenance is uh, is the department head's responsibility. Uh, you have to keep the facilities up to snuff, so to speak, so that they're safe and that they're um, they accomplish the goal that they're there for. But um, we're talking about, like at Winston Park, you're talking about a building that was built in the 1960s or 70s that is <coughs> literally falling down. I met, met uh, Director Dukes out there on a couple of times, hadn't he? And there was so much work that the floor, on the top floor, is actually dangerous. So 
we're putting um, that on the back burner. I don't know who set up the uh, projects to begin with, but they should have looked at that too. Uh, I know that maintenance is supposed to be in the annual budget, but it wasn't. Just like the lights for <coughs> Fair Play Park was not in the maintenance. And we had to take it out of the supply. So what we've got to, we've got to do a better job of maintaining what we have. I have a lot of complaints about that, that we're not maintaining what we have. But when you're talking about a building that is that old and being utilized by people, if, there's, if something happens to somebody because the floor falls through, and that is very, uh, I mean, that is very possible with this building. If you went out there, uh, you would be afraid to walk across the floor, on the top floor. And so uh, the park is one of the oldest parks. It was the only park in Winston with that and out there on Post Road for many, many years. And one of them was run by the Ruiton Club, you know. But this was the first park that we had out there. Uh, Winston Park is the most active <laughs> um, ballpark in I think in Douglas County, um, <coughs> but I just, it, it troubles me to say we're going to run out of money before we get to uh, the, the western side of the county. And it's just like um, the Reynolds Road road project. We ran out of money before we got to one of the most dangerous intersections in the county where there's wrecks there all the time and it still hasn't been done. We ran out of the money in 2002 is what I'm mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. We need to be looking at the overall good of the county and not just a certain area. It needs to be the overall good of the county and I think we, sometimes we do need to shift things around mm -hmm. and put uh, priorities up there too. So I yield back. Okay. Finish my statement since I got taken away. Yes. Yeah, we yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, I get it. Let's not believe it. The, the policy debate, because again, I, I think how long we've been here? Right? We've been here a decade. At least I have. You, you got to advocate. You got to be in tune to what's important for your district, right? So when I hear this, that it's like a victim mentality. Like, oh God, we didn't like. And you're at the table. Advocate. Be aware. There was nothing to prohibit it an argument to say that this wasn't important. I'm not going to feel bad because there was no advocacy for District 4. That's not my fault, right? I'm, I'm sitting here, all of us are equal with one vote in an absolute sense, right? And so if the administration has not got your back because they didn't bring that forth, that's you and their relationship. You, you work that out with them. But when I hear this, it's like, okay, okay, it's enough, enough. We go forward if we if there's an opportunity to recalibrate, and that was the whole point. It's like okay, we can recalibrate, but you try to assign blame for this for the sake that you had plenty of opportunities to advocate for whatever you wanted to. But we would, we would not feel bad because we made decisions and advocated on behalf of our citizens, and you didn't, right? And so this it's implied like that's enough of that, because again the county is like well, okay, right? Okay, everybody go. We come in here every two weeks. Go. Come in here, tweaks. Go. Pay attention to what's happening. Know when to hit your windows of opportunity to sort of lay in and, and, and push your what you need on behalf of your citizens. But again, it, it, I mean, we spent eight million dollars on bonding waters, which wasn't in my district. On a, on the quad center, it went. The scope went from five million to eight million. Right. So I understand, but it, I, I understand, but it's let's stop this narrative because it, it it starts painting a picture as if like look what they're doing, and I'm like I, I'm like. It, it needs to change. It needs to be more of a Douglas United versus, and, and look at like, oh God, you know what? I did miss that window. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, it's really, I have to take responsibility for what I didn't do behalf of my citizens and stuff versus he did this, they did that. Okay, that district, you're equal. Weigh in. I yield. And you're not equal when you uh, chair all the committees, too. Yeah, but okay. I will say this that we were not allowed to go to those meetings that the citizens group was uh, in their ball, the department heads. So if anybody dropped the ball, it was the department heads. 
Don't sit there and say, I don't advocate for my district. They will tell you I speak up for my district. But something should have been said at the meetings by the de department heads. This is the needs. This is the needs right here. So I'm not going to sit here and say whether or not I advocate for my district. I don't have the clout that you have in this on this board. So uh, I I yield back before we get. Okay. Amen. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up so we can move on to the next one. Yes, Chairman, I ain't said anything. Right, right, right. You did not say yes. yes. I just want to think, swing the needle around to probably a more positive side, and we're having we're having conversations about you know long term capital right. improvement plan, yes. mm -hmm. and a lot of things that come before <coughs> us, and a lot of things that we find we we, we this administration, past administrations, uh, perhaps have been remiss in, and that is these big ticket but perennial continual capital items like the like the lighting that, you know that we've replaced. Uh, these, 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 yeah, these are the kind of things that need to be in, in, a, in a capital plan for every department and and for every uh, uh, major initiative that we right. take. So I'm pleased, you know, that as I leave office to see some focus on long-term capital planning mm -hmm. that'll look at floors and roofs and, and air conditioning units <coughs> and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, so I yield back. Okay. We would just complete the whole, we can wrap it all up. <laughs> okay. We can wrap it all up. Because I don't want to let Gary kind of take the hit of what he didn't do. Because I think as a committee, we've done probably the best of the best as a, a, a committee. However, there's a difference between maintenance and capital items. So that's the difference here. Now, who advocate for their district, that's going to be on us. However, however, if that's a true safety hazard, as we did with the 400,000 on the lights that we found that was a huge problem, and I didn't agree with, but we went and spent the $400,000, shifted things around just to get that project done because that was a safety issue. Now, if, if there's a safety issue, there's a difference, and there's a different response that I think you'll get from this board. However, these projects, that this particular project, I think was probably the, the, the best way to go to kind of move this particular building would be probably the biggest and the best that Douglas County has probably seen in Parks and Rec, period. And we're within the margin of, of uh, getting it done at a number that makes sense. Because if, you, if we had our way, we would have all probably chose, as the citizens did, the, the, the Cadillac version. Yes. But as we stated, we are trying to do all we can because we're the ones who set up the priority when it comes to the list that we came up with. We set that up. That's what we came up with um, to include staff telling us what that is. So we take fault at what we came up with to say this is kind of where we are and these are the numbers we're going to spend. So not, no, there's no guarantee with whatever splots that we ever do, however we do it, that we're going to always get down to all the things on the, on the list that we all just wish to have. And we don't know how the economy will go to say how much money we'll have to spend just from the mere fact of what the cost, because two years ago, the cost to do this building was probably about a million so less. But it cost 250, Gary, help me out with that number, uh, per square feet or something, I think it was, yes. that it jumped. And we had to kind of absorb that cost. And that was just the reality. So we thought the better route would be to take the middle of the road. That we can grow the building upon and, and, and keep at least looking down the road for the project. So I'll leave on a note, great job on our behalf and Mike and all of us and what we did to kind of make us kind of stay in the middle of the road and look down the road of all the other projects. So I'll yield it back. Okay, thank you. And also the indoor track will benefit those uh, citizens who suffer from allergies and asthma. So I, I just think that's- And okay. the elevator and so, yeah, the benefits elevator. those trying to get, see we just can't exclude those that need to get upstairs with ADA, I think mm -hmm. it is. So you, there's a couple other things that we have to make sure we do. And building it out. So, I mean, I'm sorry. okay. Before I move on to the next thing, I want to make it very clear that that there, there is equal clout on this board. I'm probably one of yes. the fairest leaders that you've ever met in your entire life, and I listen to everybody on both sides. I don't ever give one without the other. Um, I have one child in, in, in my life, but I'm, that's a luxury to have one. But I do know how to make things balance because I am a middle child. So I just was a little offended by that equal clout because that's not true. 
Now this Winston Park has been, it was built in the 1960s. <clears throat> That's about 50 years from now. And previous administrations have gone through and that park has been sitting there. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna look at it and I'm gonna do my best to <clears throat> put some love on it, but it's been sitting there through those other administrations and they are the ones should be held accountable for that park not being done. I can't imagine a park going 50 years without even being repaired or some upkeep or some maintenance being done. So that's another conversation I'll have offline with you, Commissioner Dyer. Now we're going to move on to tab number seven. Yes. Just as a note, Madam Chair, the uh, work on the concession stand, the flooring for the concession stand has been awarded, and that work should possibly even start today for the repair of that concession. The concession stand, at which part? At Winston. Oh, at Winston. Winston Park. Yes. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure. Okay. Winston. All right. Next, we'll go to tab number seven: authorization to accept funds in the amount of eleven thousand dollars in donations and amend animal services budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director McMillan. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we have received eleven thousand dollars in donations through a collective of donations from our citizens that wish the money to be used for spay and neuter of animals and help facilitate uh, adoptions at our animal shelter. Wow. Any questions for the board, Commissioner? Yeah, quick. Oh, okay. quick mark. Now that, that doesn't include uh, the fundraiser money that we run that we uh, uh, accomplish annually. No, it doesn't. Which is about fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars. Um, I think it's it, it's clear, and this is this is a, a significant uptick. I think by virtue of having uh, a newer, nicer facility, people visiting and talking about it, uh, would you say that this is an indicator that uh, donations have gone up because people see the county putting money kind of where their heart is? And I'm talking about the citizens' parts. <coughs> Is that a fair statement? Yes, it is. I'm not putting words in your mouth that much. No, we've, okay. seen, we've seen a lot of new donations and we continue to receive a lot of donations and not only money for spay and neuters, but um, donations of food. We haven't had to buy food this year. Say that again. We have not had to buy food this year. Great. Wow. That's incredible. Maybe okay. just a little bit of kitten food, but oh, okay. a little baby wet food. But, but yeah, right. wet food, but us okay. in a whole just um, a lot of pet beds, toys, treats, you name it. You know, because, you know, I think the psychology of it is, is, is people don't want to throw money or gifts or donations down a rat hole, mm -hmm. but you provide a good, nice, wholesome environment facility and people are willing to, willing to chip in. So I yield back now, Chairman. Okay, thank you. We'll Commissioner um, Robson. Yeah, the, the Board of Commissioners and uh, the legislative side took up um, maybe last month, I can't quite call it, it's not relevant, um, to look at euthanasia. And we had conversation, Commissioner uh, Mulcair, you recall, um, Francis, we reached out um, to you after talking to you, um, and a recommendation was supposed to come from the annual, uh, the Animal Control Advisory Board vis-a-vis -a, -vis a Pat Fulgham. It's my understanding, and I have seen the draft of, of what it was. Um, where do we stand on that, and how do we finalize that policy consideration, if anything? I'd like to see what the final results was from the um, committee. We will be giving a presentation on our final results, and we're wrapping everything up now. So it'll be a complete package for you to review. Okay. Um, we, not just necessarily for me, but the full board, and again, before yes, Commissioner Morgan leaves, so we got like tick tock to sure. be sensitive to, to that, okay? okay. Yes, uh, actually. Vice Chairman, I did speak with um, uh, Director McMillan just a second ago, and we've already uh, in play ready to talk about feral cats and it, cats, and also the next move for euthanasia, right? So we already, it's gonna, she's gonna talk to Lisa so we can place it on the forthcoming agenda. Uh, not tomorrow, but I'm saying first one in December. Yes. Okay, good, good, okay. good. 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 Okay. So it's already in play, I already had a conversation with her. Good. All right, we're gonna move on to tab number nine, authorization to approve, oh, I'm sorry, tab number eight, authorization to amend the budget for interest earned and interest paid on the 2018 tax anticipation note pertaining. Uh, Director Holman. Uh, yes, good news. Um, with tax revenues uh, coming in, we were able to pay the tax anticipation note off early. It's always due by the 31st or the last business day of the year. We paid it off on November, Friday, November the 9th, which is 52 days early, and it saved us $46,800 in interest. Uh, while the TAN was invested uh, at 
around 1.72% uh, all the way up to 2.18%. We earned uh, just under $92,500. Uh, so we just need to amend the budget to show the interest earned um, as well as the interest paid on the TAM. Okay. Thank you. For the stuff explanatory, any questions or comments from the board? Okay, I'll move on to the next tab, number nine. Opposition to approve an amendment to the contract with Terminus Municipal Advisors regarding the Cobb Douglas Community Services Board's financial review analysis and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to legal uh, review. Director Holman. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, in discussions with Terminus as well as um, the Finance Committee, uh, the Community Service Board, uh, we've had a conference call with them as well to go over to make sure that since it is right now the Cobb Douglas Community Service Board, we want to make sure that Douglas County um, is getting equitable uh, services for the amount that we pay and the amount that's funded uh, through the state. Uh, so we've asked Terminus, uh, which is David Corbin, our municipal advisor, to come in and enhance the scope of their current contract to review and examine the uh, fees that the Community Service Board um, collects uh, along with how the, those fees are dispersed uh, regarding if they're dispersed in the county, Cobb County or Douglas County, mm -hmm. so that we can move forward with um, any kind of recommendations that come out of that review. Any questions from the board? Tab number 10, authorization to issue uh, holiday bonuses for 2018. Director Hallman again. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, as we discussed briefly at the budget retreat last week, uh, we wanted to put on the agenda. Um, I got with Frederick or Mr. Barry, and I appreciate him uh, getting back with me on um, the proposed holiday bonuses. And I'll kind of let him kind of go over, if you don't mind, of what the criteria is and, and everything of what we've done in the past and what you're recommending the small change for mm -hmm. this year. So, uh, what we've done in the past as far as the uh, holiday bonuses are concerned. Uh, full time if you're hired before uh, June 1st it is you get the full amount if you are hired after June 1st then you will get half of that uh, part time uh, bi-weekly part time monthly as well as uh, state employees with a supplement they would get that half amount as well uh, what we've done in the past uh, for, the, well, for those who are hired prior to June 1 they would get uh, half of the full amount that the uh, full-timers would get. Those who are hired afterwards, they would not get, uh, you know, they wouldn't be eligible for the bonus. What I recommended to Mark and, uh, and to Jennifer is that we do, uh, for those who are uh, part-time, uh, bi-weekly, <coughs> monthly, and those who are uh, state employees, that they would get half of, of that amount. So uh, we're proposing $100 for those part-timers that were hired prior to June 1 and $50 for, uh, for those who were hired after that date. And uh, the total amounts, uh, total amounts would uh, add up to roughly 196,100 for uh, the full-time bonus. Getting 200. Getting 200. Mm -hmm. Getting the other yeah. bonus, 200. Yeah. And let me see here. 13,450. Thank you. <coughs> Thirteen thousand four fifty for the uh, for the part timers uh, as with the adjusted amount of fifty dollars for those hired after June one. Okay. Any questions from the board, Commissioner? Uh, I just uh, you know a lot of people don't know, and, and some, a lot of people do know that we have a uh, you know staff report uh, agenda item request, and it requires some background history details, legal review, and that sort of stuff. Uh, and in this particular case, there's there's no information. Uh, so, uh, in the future, you know, and then talk about the budget impact, and, and none of that information is filled out on this uh, on this report, this item agenda item request. Uh, and it would be uh, it would behoove us to uh, be transparent on that and have that information on this on this sheet. So, uh, I yield back. Okay, Mr. Robinson. Yeah, and to, to that, I have similar thinking the same thing. But everything you just said. Um, um, Director Perry, can we have that specifically in writing? Absolutely. Those thresholds mm -hmm. so that information is available to the citizens. So there's two parts, Madam Chair. One, I mean, to the employees, uh, specifically who is, who's eligible for it and why and what this recommendation is, and two, uh, quantifying the money. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. I we can get that to you. Okay. And we can add that information to the agenda item if it's just developed yeah. over the weekend. Yes, yeah. it should yeah. be. Okay. That's good. 
Okay. So by tomorrow we'll have the instructions and the dollar quantified. Is yes, that what I'm hearing? Yes. Madam Chair, I'm mean, yes. asking. Yeah, that's what you hear. Okay. Thank you. All right, tab number 11, authorization to accept a check, check from the Sheriff's <coughs> Office asset for, forfeiture account in the amount of $2,570.89 for proceeds for the uh, auction of seized property and amend the bu budget. Uh, Carlin. Yes, in July, the uh, Douglas County Sheriff's Department utilized uh, Jeb Dobson uh, Auction Company to sell seized property. Um, under the uh, Drug Forfeiture Act, uh, this is the uh, percentage due to the or to the uh, board um, in the form of a uh, uh, check from the uh, sheriff's office asset forfeiture account. Okay, any questions from the board? All right, we'll move to tab number twelve: authorization to approve the annual maintenance agreement with Control Concepts CCI for maintenance of the HVAC equipment at the Law Enforcement and Detention <coughs> Center and authorize the chairman to sign all related uh, documents. Colonel Oliver. Yes, this is a 12-month contract. Uh, Control Concept provides a variety of services, partnering with the Douglas County Sheriff's Department and our maintenance uh, group. This system is, our HVAC is one of the most major components in efficient building operation at the uh, Sheriff's Department. Uh, Control Concept provide training and support to our maintenance personnel. They provide monthly on-site um, eight hours with a technician to inspect all components of the HVAC. Um, they also provide troubleshooting over the telephone and uh, they provide training to our personnel. Okay, just, just angle. Yes, ma'am. Agreed, okay. Any questions of commissioner? Yeah, how often do we, I mean, I, the, the jail came online in what, 13? Uh, this is five years later. Um, how long have they had this contract or is it something, how does it work? It's, it's my understanding that they've had the contract since the uh, jail was uh, started, since prisoners or personnel was moved into the uh, jail. Okay. Um, Director Peacock, were you involved in this contract? We just sort of, and I'm okay if not, but how did No, it this was done by um, the program management firm, CPS, that we had uh, doing all the jail <coughs> stuff. <coughs> so no, we would not have been involved in this contract. So in that case, how do we, who validates their efforts? I mean, they're a contractor of us. If the director of purchasing is not involved, and I'm assuming the county administrator just brought this forth, how does that work? Where's the oversight? Well, the oversight is with the sheriff's department, and it's I, I get that's it. That's what I'll I'll defer to them to answer anything else past that. I get it. I'm maybe wrongly, but so Mark, were you involved in this at all Mark with the sheriff? Oh, Mark's he walked out. Well, out with the restroom. All right. Well, I, we can take it offline. I'm sure not to belabor it, but the point was just. <laughs> making sure that the administration still bridge the gap. Again, we know we have constitutional officers, no problem, we won't get in that conversation, but I wanted to make sure that at least somebody on our side bridge this gap. Okay. We'll just take it off mine. <coughs> just, just for the record, Mark, can we meet? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mark, can we meet offline to talk about um, um, this contract that, um, that came through number comprehensive, 12. number 12? Okay. Uh, they went to CCI that um, our, our team or the Stanco or no comprehensive services um, actually uh, worked this contract through the sheriff's office and I just want to close the gap between the administration and our constitutional officer and you, you were by default the only person that could do that. Vice <laughs> Chair, let me make clear that this was done during the construction phase of the courthouse. This is not something that's been that was recently done by CPS. This was a, the original contract that was signed for the services at the jail, and it's just been rolled over year after year. So it's been rolled over year over year. Now we've got mm -hmm. a new guy in place this here to get some extra. Just that's why I want my I, just to sure I got it. it. But that, to that very point, it's like okay, there's a lot of moving hands and parts in this thing. Mm -hmm. Like that's very interesting that they're supposed to be doing security here, but they're over there doing maintenance. So that's my point. No, 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 no. Let, let it go. Okay. I got it. I got okay. it. Mark, can we meet offline? I just want to meet with Mark offline. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Next, we'll meet to um, 
Next, we'll go to tab number 13, authorization to accept a check from the Sheriff's Office asset for care account in the amount of $9,461 for trunk or treat at the courthouse and amend the budget. Uh, Colonel Oliver again. Yes, the uh, annual trunk or treat at the courthouse was a huge success. There was approximately 3,000 uh, children that attended and 1,500 parents uh, participated in the event. This event um, allow is, is a safe event for both the parents and the children. Also uh, builds trust and fosters long relationships with the uh, law enforcement as well as uh, other government uh, officials and employees. Oh wow, sounds like a huge success. Any questions before I move to the next one? Okay, tab number 14, uh, approved. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all of them. Tab number 14, approve a change in architectural and engineering fees to be paid to Carter Watkins <coughs> Association uh, Associates Incorporated due to the increase in size and scope of the new Douglas County Senior uh, Center in Lakeview Springs. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. Back in January, we bid the uh, architectural services out for the Senior Center. Carter Watkins uh, was awarded that contract. It was based on the scope <coughs> of a um, 14,000 square foot facility with no pool and uh, outdoor pickleball courts. Uh, now the scope has increased by almost 30% to 18,000 square feet. We are, have included an indoor pool, which is going to uh, uh, make more complex the HVAC plumbing and electrical system design that has to be done, as well as ceiling heights, acoustics, and other special building materials. So it's uh, the, the, the architect is asking that we uh, allow uh, uh, or agree to his uh, proposed proposed fee increase um, to cover the uh, the increased cost from uh, thirty three three million three hundred thousand dollars to four hundred eight four million eight hundred thousand dollars. So it's a, an increase of about seventy seven thousand dollars in the fees. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this this is an item that should have come through the, the uh, Parks and Recreation Committee for a recommendation to the full board for study. Do you, do you concur? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. What is it? You said it should have come through the yeah, Parks and Recreation should have come through the Parks and Recreation Committee for review and recommendation. Mm -hmm. Okay. You have uh, a contribution to make, uh, County Administrator? It's the same thing. Oh, same thing. should come through. Okay. okay. So we just going to pull this off for tomorrow? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So right now we're just going to put a pin in this um, directly. Mm -hmm. to the can you send it to the committee, Madam Chair? Yeah, we'll mark the Here, can I have a I'm I'm seeing next some, agenda? I'm seeing some scope creep uh, <coughs> without appropriate review. Commissioner, do you accept oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the responsibility of the committee? Absolutely. Okay. Oh, I was getting a signal from <laughs> Okay, so mark this tab number 14 will go before, uh, uh, go before uh, Commissioner Mitchell's Committee Parks yes, and Recreation. Yeah. Okay, so we just that's it. We'll put a pen in it and we will not you will not see this tomorrow. Uh, tab number fifteen, authorization to award a contract to Karnatsa Zasa. What is this going to be? Cornatsa. Yeah, I almost got it. Cornatsa mm -hmm. uh, Associations Incorporated for the installation of the <coughs> Fair Play Park Lighting System for the total cost of four hundred twenty four thousand four hundred and eleven dollars and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Peacock. Yes, ma'am. The board uh, um, asked that uh, on an expedited basis that we uh, send out an RFP or a bid to determine if we uh, to find a company that could install a new lighting system at the Fairplay Park due to the safety issues. Uh, we uh, issued an invitation to bid. We received five bids. Um, point answer is the low bid. Uh, I've checked three of their, well, two of the three references they gave us and they're highly recommended by other counties that have worked with them. Um, so we're asking um, so that we can go ahead and get the project moving forward that the board approve the award of this contract to Cornatzer. Any questions from the board? I know Commissioner Guy would definitely appreciate this project because uh, we've been waiting on it for a while. Thank you. Um, tab number 16, authorization to approve an intergovernmental agreement with the city of Douglasville for monitoring and adjustment of signal timing around the Arbor Place Mall during the 2018 winter holidays and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. 
Director Valentino, yes, if, uh, if you feel up to it, I know you. No, absolutely, okay. no problem. Uh, this we have done uh, for several years in a row, and what, what it is is an agreement to share the cost of having our traffic consultant monitor those intersections in the neighborhood of, uh, in the immediate vicinity of the mall uh, during the holidays to be able to adjust the signal timing to facilitate or improve <coughs> traffic uh, in the area. Now, uh, obviously, they, they can tweak uh, the signal timing and improve uh, circulation and mobility in the area up to a point. Mm -hmm. It's not going to solve the issue of capacity and uh, just ex the volume that comes to that. Area. Okay. Commissioner Geiger. Yes. Uh, Miguel. You yes. have an engineer, is it Hagen? Or? Uh, I have an in-house person by the name of Hagen. Does he go out and he adjusts these? No, this is actually our traffic consultant. We have a consultant, a consultant Wilbur and Associates, mm -hmm. that's under contract to the county, mm -hmm. that we, uh, they're traffic engineers, and they are able to tap into the transportation center <coughs> control room and look at the operation of the signals remotely. So they have engineers uh, who are their staff that monitor uh, these intersections during those peak hours. But who does it now? Uh, because well, something's off whack. <laughs> well, there's, there's a number of people who, who do it uh, essentially along the DOT corridor. DOT has staff that does that. But uh, that's Highway 5. That's all highway highway 5. 5. Exactly. So they have to control that traffic. They have to interact with that traffic as well. So they are in communication and coordination with the state during that time period. But it was, it was under, I was under the impression that they changed the timing on the weekends they, and they did during the week. They do. They do. But in addition to that, uh, those intersections are being monitored so that if there's a, a lot of volume approaching from a direction that it was not anticipated, uh, then they're able to change the timing slightly to try and facilitate movement as well. So yeah, there are timing plans developed for those weekend time periods and the holiday time periods, but in addition to that, there are engineers monitoring the system to uh, see what else they can and do. And when they monitor, they don't put eyes on it. They no, they're doing cameras. it. They're, okay. they're doing it through cameras. Through the cameras, they can see that the traffic is backed up. Correct. Are these the same people that's doing it now? <laughs> uh, no, this is a different, uh, different uh, outfit. Okay, but they can adjust it right there on the spot. Correct. And they don't have to go out there to the little boxes they do and not. stuff like that. No. Um, okay, because um, it's here lately. It's been very bad. Uh, yeah. I'm sure you've heard some complaints about oh, that. Oh, I know. <laughs> uh, but um, I know that when we get the southbound, the two turning lanes, that will help speed up the cycle for the lights and everything. But right now, a lot of the backup. Of course, is northbound, and uh, Douglas Boulevard is backing up, you know, two or three lanes back. Just a lot of volume. Yeah. A lot of volume, yeah. yeah. But um, it just seems like the timing's not right because a lot of times you're sitting there to go <coughs> to Douglas Boulevard to cross Highway Five, and there's very little traffic coming down Highway 5 this way, but they backed up that way, so <laughs> um, I just wish that maybe we could monitor that a little bit better, I guess. Well, it's it's a matter of uh, the cost as well. Uh, certainly you need we to come out with me on uh, Saturday, <laughs> mm -hmm. and let's, let's go through that uh, All right. and, and see how it, it gets backed up to the extent that it's uh, blocking other intersections. Sure. 
Okay. So I yield back. Okay, thank you. Director Bellatin, so you will be joining Commissioner Guido too <laughs> on a field trip with that light. I understand exactly what you mean. And the date should be determined. Uh, yeah, you could. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, related to this, I, Miguel, put, make a note. Let's, let's, let's put a pin on this in our Transportation Committee. This is something we've had this conversation about dirt roads, which we think it's, it's an issue for citizens. Uh, we've had a problem with um, obviously sidewalks. Um, we've, we've had a problem about potholes mm -hmm. and signals. All of this deals with congestion or just exposure. And I think it's something that we should probably take a, take a look at. It says that the, do we need a dedicated resource? I mean, the whole point was that uh, what would they call it? I forgot that your your predecessor used to talk about this this command center. And, and so to that, to, to her point, like, well, why aren't we doing it all the time? I mean, why, why, why won't we just commit to the fact that the, because people do want to experience their tax dollars and not just their roads. They don't want to be on a neat road, but then they can't get through traffic lights. Um, and, it's, and they got to get, I mean, time is money and they want to get on with their life. So I, I think moments like that, that, that requires our focus more than we know. I hear your point where it may cost, but, but if that's what the citizens are asking for, they're setting the expectations of what the priority is. In other words, can I get through? I just want to get across the street. I just want to get down the street. And, and, and again, sometimes we get incident sensitive and says, well, that's, well, I mean, it's a holiday. I mean, it, it's like, it should be every day. And we should be able to monitor traffic flow. I'm sure, just like you said, we should be able to proactively monitor potholes and make sure they're maintained. Mm -hmm. We should proactively monitor traffic flow um, and there's nothing more irritating than hitting a pothole and tearing your car up or being in a light and stuck. Like, I'm just trying to get across the street. We know we've got density, and I think you have a willingness right now to commit to it. So I, I, I guess to say, Commissioner Loka, you know what I'm saying, to be able to look at this. So can we put a note, bring it up in the transportation? We sure can. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And just on the side note, I sent the um, vice chairman, because he's the transportation chairman, and just to send him some white papers on uh, fiber optic approach to looking at potholes. And I know it's some technology out there that can detect those potholes. And also just, I'm not sure about road shoulders, but I know potholes. So he'll be running that before the committee. And I, I'm not sure if you received the email. I know I sent it to you. Did you see it yet? No. It's in your, it's in your. <laughs> I, I sent it to you Saturday night at midnight. I don't want to help you see it. So. I'll read it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Anyway, we'll move on to the next uh, tab. Thank you so much, uh, Director Valentin. Tab number 17, uh, authorize the Douglas County Public Libraries to participate in the West Georgia Regional Library System Food for Fines program during the month of December. Director Moore. Hi. Um, previously listed on the agenda, um, we were doing a $10 for per food item up to $100 per card. That has been modified by the regional system. We will be doing $2 per item up to $30 for given and fines um, at the recommendation of the Regional Library Board. Um, this will, program will run December 1st through December 31st. Um, we'll be collecting non-perishable food items. Um, at this time, we'll not be collecting pet food. We'll be doing another drive for that later in 2019. Um, donations will be used to forgive overdue fines not for paying for lost items or printing, <coughs> copying, that sort of thing. We've done this um, several times in the past. It's been fairly successful. We don't expect a huge impact on our budget. Um, right. Typically, we deposit around $5,000 a month between all three libraries. This should be a very small impact to our monthly deposits, mm -hmm. estimating no more than $2,000 of forgiven fines. Okay. Any Back questions for the board, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, I mean, it, it, admittedly, um, I, I was at, we, we collectively were at Dog River Library for our budget retreat. And I had, to be honest, I hadn't been there since it opened, because I, I tend to go to the other one. But it, it, circulation, mm -hmm. um, how, how has circulation been since that's been opened? Mm -hmm. Do you since know? Dog River has opened, um, overall, Region-wide, statewide, circulation has dropped over the past 10 years um, due to the access of more e-materials, um, more people have access to the internet and can look up their own items. Um, circulation is maintained fairly steadily through the past few years. Um, the Douglas County branch here on Selman is still the busiest branch in the West Georgia system. Dog River is, Lithia Springs is number three, and Dog River is number four 
region wide. Okay. Hmm. That's interesting. So, so people are accessed, and again, it corrected based on the internet. I got it, meaning e stuff. So it's corrected, but it's now more normalized now, volume wise. Um, so people are using it. So it's a consistent flow. Um, they see value. Yes, um, absolutely. And, and I saw the really neat computers and everything um, when I was out the dog. I mean, it was beautiful. I mean, still beautiful from mm -hmm. when we built it. Um, and so, again, I, 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 it's not a, a, an assessment or evaluation of it. I was just curious of what the numbers were. I'm good. Madam Chair, are you? Okay. Okay. But my eyes. <laughs> Commissioner Guider. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I just learned that y'all have e-books yes. that I can download. And uh, I think we need more advertising of, okay. uh, of the technology that you offer because uh, I think everybody thinks of the library as just books mm. on a shelf. And it's, uh, it was uh, very enlightening for me to find out that you, I don't have to buy books now from Amazon. I can just rent them from y'all. Right. So uh, I think we need to advertise, maybe put some more on the website about mm -hmm. it and everything. And um, just get the word out there to the public. Okay, absolutely. Thank you. Okay, Commissioner Mulk here. Yeah, that's just a curiosity question. What are what's the money amount of outstanding that finds to Douglas County Libraries, or do you have it broken down that far? I do not have that figure with me, but I can get that certainly um, by the end of the week. Well, we think about it. And, ta um, and take your holiday. Thanks for having me. I'll get it to you next week. <laughs> next week. Okay. Right. Okay. Are you with us? Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Director Moore. Thank, Thank you. you. Next, we'll move Please. to tab number 18, authorization to, to accept $2,200 in donations for the Douglas County Behavior and Health Month and amend the External Affairs budget. Our Director Stanley is in a legislative meeting with Congressman Scott as we speak. And uh, she has asked our Director Hallman to stand in her absence, yes. speak in her absence. Um, as suggested or as mentioned, it was $2,200. It was about uh, $1,200 uh, from Hughes Ray Company for the Behavioral Health Month and then another $1,000 from the Douglas County Board of Education. Yes. So we just want to accept these funds and then amend her budget so she has them for the expenses that are incurred. All right. Any questions for the board? All right. I'll move on to the next. Item tab number 19, authorization to execute an amended intergovernmental agreement with the City of Douglasville and the City of Villarica for the Douglas County Tax Commissioner's Commissioner to provide tax collection services for each city. Um, Madam, legal Madam Department. Chair, yeah, I'll take that, Madam Chair. Th these are two agreements, and the Tax Commissioner is a party to those agreements. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to make sure it's clear, uh, the old tax collection agreements between the tax commissioner and the city probably needed some updated language in them but in addition to that we're modifying how the payment is made for the services rendered by the tax commissioner himself mm -hmm. now on each of these two dollars will come by statute to the board of commissioners or it's supporting the efforts of the tax commissioner in sending out the bill and the tax commissioner is entitled to a fee rather than that fee being directed to us and then back to him it's going directly to him and they're going to deal with him on whatever that that means this is only a two-year agreement meaning it's only good for the collection in 19 and 2020 yeah. and then we'll revisit it i understand the city of billbrook has already approved it as written um, and i'm waiting for signature the city of Douglasville took it up at this work session on thursday i understand for marsha <laughs> and susan it will be recommended to be approved as written. So I'm asking y'all to go ahead and approve so there's something in place before we start we turn the corner next year. And I will say I've talked to the tax commissioner who is a constitutional officer mm -hmm. and he has blessed these two agreements. Okay. So they didn't go out of our office until he was involved in the wording that's in there. And I approve of the words. Okay. All right. Any questions from the board? I believe that's pretty self-explanatory. Thank you so much, uh, Attorney Bernard, for working so diligently on this project for us and our uh, finance department as well. Um, next, last but not least, is number 20, authorization to advertise for a public hearing to make changes to the Douglas County Code of Ordinances, uh, Section 3-70, pursuant to the recent passing of the Sunday brunch bill by voters regarding time requirements for Sunday alcohol sales I'm, I'm going to hand that, Madam Chair. Okay. In uh, and, and Ron's absence, uh, all this is is changing the on-premise consumption time from 12:30 to 11 o'clock, pursuant to Georgia created a statute that allowed us to have a referendum. They passed 
in Douglas County, I think it was overwhelmed. In fact, I, we had a higher percentage in the city of Douglas, but I want to say it seemed like it was like two thirds or one third or something like that. But we will advertise the public hearing. The only modification is the start time on Sunday on premise consumption or under the brunch bill is 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. uh, once y'all hear this in public hearing, once it's approved, it will go into immediate effect. So this is to our, this is not the actual public hearing. This is to advertise so we can put it on for a public hearing. Okay. Well, Commissioner, you're okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You. Commissioner Mitchell, you okay? Yeah. Okay, I didn't see you. Okay, approval of expenses next. Board of Commissioners, take a look at these expenses and be prepared to approve accordingly tomorrow. Um, and next we have a discussion for a board of appointments uh, to be discussed in the executive session. Um, Attorney Bernard, do we uh, need to go into executive session? Yes, ma'am. Could I make an announcement? Yes, uh, you can. I don't know if y'all have heard, but Mike Miller, Council died this morning at 2 o'clock, so um, just wanted to let everybody know that. Wow. We definitely, if I had been aware of and I'm, we still is never too late, we can have a moment of silence mm -hmm. for our councilman, um, Mike Miller, mm -hmm. and if you all just extend maybe one minute, not maybe, one minute, a moment of silence for our uh, amazing uh, councilman Miller, please. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, I just found out. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, condolences to the family, and I'm quite sure we will be reaching out uh, uh, with our responses of flowers and uh, <coughs> condolences and sympathy to the family. Um, next, uh, Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? We need it for all three for litigation, real estate, and personnel, but it won't be lengthy. Okay. <laughs> I so <still> move that <laughs> stated. Okay. Second. We have a motion in the second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Take a five minute break, grab your food, and then get your lunch and come back. All right, Board of Commissioners, do we have any other uh, discussions or questions? No, ma'am. Uh, with that being said, that me this meeting is adjourned. All right. <laughs>